Hey there guys, I'm back to another video. As a part of being a video game collector, you need to figure out a way to store and organize your collection. Here are some tips for organizing your video game collection. First tip is kind of obvious and self-explanatory. Shelves are going to be your best friend if you want to display your collection. Bookcases, multimedia storage, or custom shelves is the method I would go for personally. Bookcases may not fit your games to their exact dimensions, but you can fit little figurines and collectibles in front of your games to personalize your collection more on the shelf. Multimedia storage units will fit most games and movies on there perfectly. The issue with bookcases and multimedia storage is the price of them. Depending on where you buy the unit, they can be somewhat cheap, like the $59 for the Bully Bookcase at Ikea, which is what I've been using for the past couple of years and works really well for games, movies, and comic books or they could be $223.99 for a multimedia storage rack at Wayfair. My recommendation if you're looking for bookcases slash multimedia storage is to shop around and compare prices. You'll also want to measure how much room you have for this potential bookcase slash multimedia unit. Everyone's room is different, so you don't want to buy a massive multimedia storage rack if you can't even display it properly in your room. Custom shelves are a much cheaper alternative if you know what you're doing and have the tools to do it. Buying the supplies with a little bit of labor and sweat, you'll be spending a fraction amount of money compared to buying a bookcase or multimedia unit. Also, since these are custom built to your liking, you'll be able to optimize the shelving unit and fit as many games on there as possible. Personally, I don't have any experience building shelves myself, but I'll leave a link in the description below to a blog post where this guy made a custom shelf for less than $40 in supplies. I'll also leave a link in the description below to Sick Cooper's YouTube channel. His 2013 and 2016 room tour videos displayed a big custom shelf and looked really nice for housing his collection. Next tip is probably a bit strange, but sometimes you have to work with what you got. Some people have a little bit of extra room in their dressers with empty drawers, so you could use this space to put some of your games in here. My best friend Damien does this setup and it works well for him. You can fit a lot of games in a dresser drawer, but keep in mind the amount of weight you're putting in here. Dresser drawers aren't meant to hold a ton of weight, so be mindful of how much you're stuffing into these individual drawers. Now, instead of a dresser, you can also just buy plastic drawer bins to put games and accessories in. Damien also had this setup where he'd put his games and accessories in these plastic drawers, and I sort of adopted this setup for my game room, but just for my game controllers and accessories. It works well for me, and I keep my controllers in plastic bags to keep them from scratching against each other. Metal Jesus Rock's room tour displays how to use plastic drawers to keep games and accessories in these bins nicely organized. If you want to see that video, it will be linked in the description below as well. Another organizing tip for plastic bins is for loose cartridges like NES games and N64 games. Obviously, if your collection is massive for loose cartridges, this solution might not work. For me, however, I use a plastic bin for my N64 games since it makes it easier to look at my entire N64 collection without having to pull them out one by one in my entertainment unit. A nice way to have all of my loose N64 cartridges in one spot. A quick tip that I don't see a lot of game collectors talk about is the dimensions for NES carts, DS slash 3DS game cases, and PlayStation 1 game cases are all the same size. So if you're trying to find a spot to display your collection of these titles, you can theoretically put them on the same shelf if you like. This also means media shelves for CDs could fit NES, DS, 3DS, and PlayStation 1 games as well. One tip I have for PlayStation 1 games in particular is to not have them too tightly together on a shelf. Thanks to a fellow YouTube commenter, the PlayStation 1 jewel cases could end up cracking against each other because of the tightness. So leave a little bit of wiggle room when putting your PlayStation 1 games on a shelf. These next set of tips are dedicated to original Game Boy and Game Boy Advance loose cartridges. It's kind of hard to store Game Boy slash Game Boy Advance games on a shelf without having a separate storage unit. The first one I recommend are these plastic pencil bins. They fit Game Boy and Game Boy Advance games perfectly and you can sort through them with relative ease. Another storage unit for Game Boy games is this mini three drawer unit. They fit loose handheld games perfectly as well. You can even fit some of the manuals in the drawer if you have them in your collection. The last Game Boy tip I have is the nine pocket trading card pages. This probably sounds a little freaky, but you can actually fit Game Boy games in each slot. If you're doing Game Boy Advance games, you can fit 
two games per slot. This method is honestly pretty cool. Maybe if I had more Game Boy slash Game Boy Advance games, I would do this since they would look pretty cool in a binder. Since my collection is relatively small, I've stuck with the pencil bins or the mini drawer. Pete Dory demonstrated the pencil bin and the trading card pages tip years ago on his YouTube channel. That video will be found in the description below. This last tip isn't meant for hardcore collectors, but more for people who don't have that much room and or don't care about the game cases. Since game cases take up a lot of space compared to just the disc, some people are perfectly okay with storing their games in a CD slash DVD binder and putting the game cases in their closet or elsewhere. Depending on the type of binder you get, you can hold a lot of games in there. Also, it makes so you can find all of your games in one convenient spot. The only problems I have with this method, outside of it being a sin among hardcore game collectors, is it being somewhat hard to know what games you have in your collection without having to open up the binder and look through it all. If you have over 100 games in a binder, there's no way you're going to know on the top of your head what games are in there. This is where a spreadsheet would come in handy for keeping track of your collection, which is a topic I covered previously on this YouTube. YouTube channel. Another problem I see with this method is organizing the games in the binder alphabetically. If you get a new game for the binder, do you put it at the end of the binder or do you try to shuffle through and reorganize the entire binder to put this one new game in? Obviously, you could just organize the binder how you see fit and avoid this problem altogether. Like I said, this tip isn't intended for people who are hardcore collectors. This tip is for people who are limited on space but also want to have the games physically. So yeah, those are all of the tips I have for today. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Thank you guys for watching this video. If you guys haven't already, you can subscribe. I put new videos up on Saturdays. You can follow me on social media, Facebook and Twitter. I put updates on my future videos. Check out my podcast, the Travis and Damien podcast, where we talk about games, movies, and anime every other week. And check out my Toys.TV page, where I try to stream there every once in a while. But yeah, that is all I have for today. Thank you guys for watching this video once again. I hope to see you guys next time with more videos. Game on, gamers.